Lucy, welcome back. Hope you guys are feeling good. So I remember um, going to see my father in hospital after the attack and I can remember just feeling so sad and so low and obviously at this time I'd started looking into the deen, started looking into Islam and I remember going home and I had the Quran that, the, that this, this uncle had given me oh, wow. and I remember saying, um, I remember looking at the Quran and it, just, it didn't make any sense to me, I didn't understand it at all, you know, it was just, I just opened it and I guess I was just, I was just looking for some comfort at that time. Mm. And, um, and I, I, was, I was really crying. I can remember sitting in my room and, and really crying that, you know, that what had happened mm. to my father. And um, the uncle, I remember that, that, that I could hear the uncle's voice in my, in my head saying, you know, Allah is able to do all things. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Aisha Mercedes and I have been Muslim for coming up to 12 years now. In all honesty, I would say that I was an atheist. Um, I did go to church and I could say that I was a Christian. Um, however, I did question the Christian Christianity religion. I went to church and when I would go there, I'd, I'd be asking questions um, about who Jesus was because I just couldn't understand the concept mm. of why Jesus needed to die for, for, for our sins. I, ju I just didn't get it. And every time I'd ask that question, I would be brushed off. Wow. You know, the, the people that I would be asking, I remember I asked a lady that was in the church and she, she just, it was almost like she was offended by the fact that I was asking that question. Mm. However, when I was in like times of need or times of distress, mm. I would call upon God and I would say, you know, please get me out of this situation, but I, there was no connection. Wow. I used to um, be very much involved with music um, and I used to know quite a few people that were involved in the music industry okay. and um, some of them were, were Muslim. Mm -hmm. It was intriguing for me the fact that they were Muslim and they had a religion and I didn't know anything about Islam. So I was quite, I was, re I was really quite interested to, to kind of hear and understand yeah, what this religion yeah. was about um, because obviously somebody that's you know involved in music mm -hmm. and then religion it's, it's quite a quite a it's like almost like two worlds mm -hmm. apart right so I can remember speaking to, to a few of my friends at the time and then having comparing Christianity with Islam and kind of saying you know about Christmas and how, how does, it, does it actually make sense that we celebrate Christmas and what's the relevance of kind of like Santa Claus and the Christmas mm. trees and all of that kind of thing. So when I was having those discussions, um, one of the people that was talking about Islam to me was, was actually spoke about the tortures of the grave. And um, I, was really, I was really afraid of that. Like it really scared me because as you can imagine, I was completely unaware of, of the religion of Islam. And I was, you know, living a free life. You know, so when he was when he was talking about this, I didn't even know that there was that step in the grave that, you know, once you die, you're then questioned in your grave. This was this was new to me. Mm. So I can remember having a conversation and going home and actually sitting down and thinking to myself, mm. what if I don't die as a Muslim? That was literally my thought process. And I was crying. I literally would start to cry. And I can remember trying to pray and not having any knowledge or understanding of how to pray. And back then, because it was 12 years ago, I didn't really know about, um, there wasn't really as much on YouTube and things like that. YouTube wasn't as big, you know, yeah. I wasn't on Instagram or anything. So it was just kind of like I was kind of there alone with my thoughts. Um, and it did, it made me really intrigued to then go back and ask questions. I can remember going to a, to what I'd call like an uncle, um, and he, he had owned like a shoe shop in the area that I live in. And we had like a kind of like a, a kind of almost like a father daughter relationship. Mm. Um, and he would always give me advice and, you know, I'd always go in there and buy my shoes and all that kind of thing. And I can remember him saying when I went and spoke to him about my, you know, my possibly converting to Islam, he gave me a Quran and he was like, you know, Allah is able to do all things. You know, don't worry, don't stress, like just take this Quran and ask Allah for anything. So I think a few weeks after that, my father, um, you know, he was attacked and he was attacked quite badly with a knife. 
Um, and this was really, really, you know, it was a very, very difficult time for, for the family. So I remember um, going to see my father in hospital after the attack and I can remember just feeling so sad and so low. And obviously at this time I'd started looking into the deen, started looking into Islam. And I remember going home and I had the Quran that, the, that this, this uncle had given me. And I remember saying, um, I remember looking at the Quran and it, just, it didn't make any sense to me. I didn't understand it at all. You know, it was just, I just opened it. And I guess I was just, I was just looking for some comfort yeah, at that time. And, um, and I, I, was, I was really crying. I can remember sitting in my room and, and really crying that, you know, that what had happened to my father. And um, the uncle, I remember that, that, that I could hear the uncle's voice in my, in my head mm. saying, you know, Allah is able to do all things. Mm. So I, as I was crying, I, I sat and I literally had a conversation with Allah. I just said to, to, to Allah at the time, you know, take the pain away. Mm -hmm. And I can remember feeling like this warmth, this warm feeling going all the way up my feet, all the way, you know, into my body. And, and I literally felt like the warmth touch my heart. And it's, all, it's almost as though I felt my heart lift. Um, and I know it's kind of, it, it sounds kind of weird, like how, how can you feel your heart lift? But immediately after that, I, I stopped crying mm. and it's like something just changed for me that day. So I can remember after that, um, I kind of said mm. to myself, you know, I'm definitely going to become Muslim. But I think a lot of us feel like, you know, I need some more time, I need some more time. And I kept making excuses. So after deliberating um, about taking my Shahada uh, for, Probably a few weeks, there was this overriding yes, feeling that I had that I don't want to die a non-Muslim. So I tried to, to find somebody that could actually help me take my shahada because I, di I didn't know what to do. So I contacted a friend and we arranged to meet in the masjid. So I walk into the mosque and I, the first thing I notice is there's no chairs. Um, and obviously that's comparing it to, to walking into a church. So I go in and I didn't actually even know that m men and women like pray separately. I wasn't even aware of that at the time. Um, so there were some, some men that were in there um, and they agreed to, to witness me taking my shahada with, with another person as well um, that actually, you know, helped me to do it. Um, so I can remember being asked you know, if, if I believe in, in, in Allah and I believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And obviously I, I, I answered that. And I can remember being, you know, took my shahada and then being asked to choose a name. And at the time I was, I think I was asked a few names. And when I heard the word, when I heard the name Aisha, I was like, yeah, I, I, I like that name. And at that time I, I wasn't aware of who Aisha was or anything. I was just aware of kind of like the basics of Islam. So. I can remember reading the Shahada and just feeling this overwhelming feeling of happiness, like just that kind of feeling that I'd made the right decision. And as I stepped out of the, of the mosque, I just felt like light. It's, it's a really difficult feeling to explain, but it's, it's almost, when they say that you're like a, a newborn baby, that's how I, how I felt in, internally. You know, I just, I just felt so light, so happy, so almost like a sense of relief. And um, it, yeah, I definitely think it was one of the best days of my life, alhamdulillah. So it was about six months after I converted, it was my first Ramadan. Uh, it, it was um, very, a very difficult Ramadan for me. Um, I didn't really fully understand the essence of Ramadan at that point. Um, I was very new, um, I, although I was going to quite a few conferences and things like that, I, w I was very new and I, it, I, just, I just found the actual fasting really, really difficult. Um, I, did, I did really enjoy, you know, the going to the masjid. I'd never seen so many Muslims on the streets at that time. It, it, it was something that I felt was, like, I felt like the unity and I felt like, you know, the ummah, whereas, you know, I, where, where I live, there isn't as, there isn't really that many Muslims, so it was it was a beautiful feeling, but it was also very very difficult. And I can remember feeling very much alone. Um, when you come from not having Muslim family, 
um, and not having, you know, support in, in that way. Um, when your, your friends are busy or you're not meeting up with your friends, you, you, you find yourself quite isolated. So there was some really, you know, there were some really good points when I was with friends, but when I wasn't, I was very much alone. And when I'd be breaking my fast, for example, I'd be breaking myself by breaking my fast by myself. So obviously, back when I first became Muslim, the, you know, it was like I said, I was very much alone. I didn't have family support. Um, there were a few members of my family that would kind of offer to, like, you know, almost like break the fast at the same time, you know, even though they weren't fasting. Um, but that was very rare. I can remember being at home a lot, being by myself a lot, and not having you know, anyone. And I think for a lot of reverts, you know, especially myself, it can be that it, it, it kind of, um, what's the word? It, it, it really, at that time, you feel a lot more lonely and a lot more isolated than you do the rest of the year because you're very much aware from social media um, and from other people that you speak to, you're very much aware that everybody's with their family and everybody's celebrating and, you know, you see pictures of people breaking their fast together and then you're kind of there by yourself alone. So it, 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 was, it was very difficult in the beginning, in the beginning stages. I think as time goes on um, and you get, and, and I got more of an understanding of the religion, that isolation, that loneliness, it was almost like a time for me to stop with the things that I'm doing, you know, with work, um, with education, and focus and, you know, hone in on my relationship with Allah. Alhamdulillah, now that I'm married, you know, it is, it is a real blessing because my in-laws are Muslim, you know, we, we break our fast together, you know, my husband as well. It, it, it is really different when you're, when you're married and when you have, like, that Muslim family. So the advice that I would I'd give to a convert uh, that's, you know, just having their first Ramadan or, you know, they're quite new to Islam is, you know, just just take it easy on yourself. There's so much that changes for you and there's so many things that you need to adapt to. There's so many things that, that change in your life that, you know, just take your time and take one step at a time. Fasting is, it's for somebody that's never fasted before like myself, I really struggled with the actual fast. The actual refraining from food, refraining from drink, that was actually really, really difficult for me. And for a new Muslim, you know, take, take one day at a time, try to, you know, understand the reason why you're fasting, understand and build your relationship with Allah, um, because that definitely does help you to understand why you're refraining from food and drink, and it, and it stops being, <clears throat> It stops being about just not having food and drink. It starts being about the reasons why. And once you start to build on that, you definitely start to, to really look forward to that fast. And I think just, just generally as a new Muslim, you know, you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to, to have moments where, you, where you're struggling. And especially if you're alone, I mean, there are, there are, you know, Muslim groups and associations that you can reach out to um, uh, for help. And don't be afraid to reach out for help. Don't be afraid to, to get in contact with sisters in the community. This year, especially, I've seen so many different uh, sisters that are holding, you know, iftars in the masjid for, for reverts that are, you know, sisters that are getting together, you know, for the sake of Allah, specifically for um, uh, revert uh, sisters. So, you know, don't be alone. There are people that are that are there for you. You know, the Muslim community is, you know, mashallah, alhamdulillah, uh, very, very good. It's just about finding those people that are that are open and that are there. So I definitely think like go on the Internet, go on social media. Everyone's very welcoming. And that's one thing that I definitely think don't 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 stay alone and don't don't be isolated in the beginning stages. For the born Muslims, I definitely think um, open up your doors to the reverts because, you know, unlike us, you're, you know, you, a lot of the time you have your family present. So I know that it's an important time for family and I know that, you know, it's uh, very much a family orientated time where people break their fast with their families and, you know, go to the masjid, you know, pray tarawih. Um, but 
I can remember there was a really lovely Afghani family that, you know, I would go round to their house and I would break fast with them and I would stay with, with, with my friends there. And it, re it really does help because it means that you're not alone. It means that you have somewhere that you can, you know, that you can feel like you're in the presence of Muslims. Because when you're isolated, sometimes it doesn't even feel like it's Ramadan. So I definitely think for the, for the born Muslims, if you can and if you are able to, um, you know, for the sisters, for the brothers, you know, separately, if you're able to open up your doors, invite the Muslims for dinner. And if not, you know, if, if you've got friends that are reverts, go to the masjid with them. You know, break your, your fast in the masjid, um, go to the prayers, you know, in, in, help and encourage uh, th that, that revert to, 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 to read the Quran, to go to, to lectures and things like that, because all these things, they increase your faith and um, they help they help you to, to build that love for Allah and for Islam. Thank you so much for listening to my story. Um, I hope you do find some benefit from it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. So guys, this was a beautiful story from this lady who said she remembers looking at, she remembers when she looked at the Quran, the Quran didn't make sense to her at all. Wow, beautiful. I love how the whole journey started. She said she was once a Christian, but she was not a devoted Christian. And you know, there are some questions she kept on asking that she didn't get the answer to it about Jesus. And I'm sure basically to be about Trinity, you know, Trinity and Jesus being God. I think those are the two basic questions that you know were always running through her mind. Then from there, she had friends, Muslim friends. And she was interested in their religion and that's how you know a story started that that's how everything all began through her getting to understand islam through her friend and she said what made her even you know connect more or try to understand islam was when her father was attacked you get it and at that point when she looked at the quran that her uncle gave to her it didn't make any sense to her like i just love the story the fact that you know like i will always say the situation you find yourself will determine the kind of god you are really serving if you are in a situation and if you cannot have trust in the god you're serving your religion then it, it just you start shaking your faith in in your religion will start shaking so the fact that you know she had that mindset that ah, she does not understand what was going on and she started finding peace in Islam. Then it was a beautiful step for her to take because whatever brings happiness to you is what you should go for. And that was beautiful to watch guys. I really enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.